Okay, yesterday uh, we we discussed about this, but we are not completed yet. So I think I re repeated little, uh, I repeat little bits before we pros continue. Okay, we yesterday we talking about utilizing the block diagram. Okay. Uh, instead of mathematical uh, equation okay and this basically will show you uh, how important is the block diagram okay in, re in relation to the mathematical equation okay of course if we have a feedback control system like this okay we can and work on the mathematical equation one by one, block by blocks, we get the equation, and then substitute each one of them, where at the end, we can rearrange the equation to become a transfer function, okay? Which will represent the closed loop transfer function, okay? So this is the transfer function that we get, okay, when we, it combining all the simultaneous equation that we have and then try to rearrange the equation so that we have the ratio between output to the input okay and this closed loop transfer function is particularly important because it represents many of existing practical control system okay and yesterday we talked about that when we have a block a closed loop diagram like this okay we can easily utilizing the block diagram okay to simplify the block diagram to become like this okay a closed loop like this can become a single block diagram like this. Okay? Ada dengar tak belakang? Tak dengar? Hello, hello, hello. Dengar belakang. Hello. Okay, ya. Eh? Okay. Okay. Sekiranya kita ada block diagram seperti ini, close loop like this. Okay. We can easily reduce them to become a single block like this. Okay where the G, any block that is here, we can put as G here, okay? And the H, the feedback element, we can put it here as H. So at the end, we just have the equation, which is equal to G divided by one minus plus, depend, if plus become minus, if minus become plus, okay? G multiplied by H. Okay? And at the end, basically, whatever equation that you have in this block will become the, the transfer function relating between the input, uh, the, the output to the input. Okay? And if you, if you work using the mathematical equation like before, okay? You can see that uh, it is a lengthy step to do. Okay, we need to get each equation for each block, and then we need to substitute. Okay, to combine the block, uh, the equation, and then after that we need to rearrange the equation until we get the equation like this. But if we use the block diagram, okay, straight away we can get this equation. Okay, because if you refer back to here, okay. 
this is your block diagram where you have GC here, GA here, and G, and then you have H only here. Okay. So if you work out using the block diagram, okay, utilizing this method, okay, you already know that the G here should be G multiplied by GA multiplied by GC, right? Because we have three blocks in, on the top there. Okay? Similarly here, here should be G as well, which is G multiplied by GA multiplied by, by GC. Of course, the susunan di, di block diagram yang sebelum tu, GC adalah dekat depan. GC multiplied by GA multiplied by G. Okay? But you can and change the position uh, doesn't matter. Okay? And then the feedback you have only H. Right? Okay? So, with this basically, you can avoid of doing all this step in arriving to the transfer function. Okay? You can straightforward get the transfer function from the block diagram easily. Okay? So this basically, we can consider this as a shortcut, lah. okay? Instead of working through all the mathematical equation, okay? But we use the block diagram just to reduce the block diagram to become a single blocks, and then basically once we get that, basically the equation inside the block diagram is basically the transfer function, okay? Any question on this? It's okay? Okay? Because if you do this step, basically you can reduce maybe between 5 to 10 minutes of your time. Okay? For solving the, equi uh, the problem. Okay, let's do a little bit exercise here. Uh, we have a multi-loop feedback control system. Uh, this is a complex system where if you see here that we have the input here, okay, and the output is here, okay, and then we have uh, quite a few blocks, G1, G2, G3, G4, Okay, and for the feedback, we have H1, H2, H3. Okay, if you look at this, basically we have three loops inside here. Okay. Okay, if you need to come out with the transfer function for this, okay, the best way is to do the, to use the block diagram to do the, block diagram reduction, okay? And you have any idea how to do? Okay. So you can refer to your block diagram tables. You can move some of the, uh, uh, for example, this point, maybe you can move it here, okay? If you look at this one, okay, there is a loop here. Of course, the loop you can simplify later on to become a single block. Okay, but whenever you have uh, overlapping blocks like this, uh, overlapping loops like this, you cannot simply, uh, you cannot simply uh, reduce the loops. Okay, first you need to to make the loops so that it, it will not uh, overlapping, okay? For this case, for example, this node, maybe we can move to the behind this block, okay? Move, the, move this way, so that now this loop will become independent, okay? And then we have another loops, which is bigger loop here, okay? And then we have, have another loops. Now let's see how we do that. 
Okay, you can see here, we can move this one to here. Okay, we move this, uh, initially it was here. So, we move it uh, behind the block G4. Okay, the only thing because we move the, uh, this one behind the G4, okay, what we need to do, because we need to retain the equation here so that the result of this arrow should be the same as before. Okay, so because of that, we need to divide this with G4. Okay, because before is we have only H2 here. Okay, but now since when it moved here, it multiplied by G4. And then because there is J4, we need to, to cancel out the G4 so that we can have the H2 only. That's why we need to divide with G4. Okay? Okay, once we do that, we have, uh, we have extended this loop to become bigger. And what you can see that here, the next one, you can see that these two blocks, okay, become in series, right? So when it is in series, we can combine them. We can multiply them. Okay? And then once we multiply that two blocks, what we got? We got a, a closed loop here, where we have a G3 multiplied by G4, and then here we have H1. Okay? So you can use the uh, transfer function reduction, uh, reduction to reduce the loops, okay, where by doing that, you get this equation. Okay, when you reduce this, these loops, you will get this equation because the top one is the G is basically the G3 multiplied by G4, there, okay, G3 multiplied by G4, the H is basically H1, okay? And the only thing, because here is positive, so here should be negative, okay? So easily you can reduce this block diagram into a single block like this, this, this loop into a single block like this, okay? And then once after you do this, okay, basically you will see that this one and this block will be in series, Okay, so the next step, you can combine this by multiplying it, them together. Okay. And then after that, you will, after we combine these two blocks, what we can see is that we have another loops here. Can be solved. Okay, can be reduced to single blocks. Okay, where the G is G2 multiplied by G3, multiplied by G4 over 1 minus G3, multiplied by G4, multiplied by H1, and then the H is basically equal to H2 multiplied, uh, divided by G4, okay? And then if you put that into the equation, basically we will get this transfer function, okay? We got the G2, G3, G4. I think this one, we have done the simplification, okay? After replacing this as G and this as H, Okay, and since this is minus, okay, it should be positive, but after simplifying, we get this equation like this, okay. Uh, the negative here, just because of uh, the simplification, after we've done the simplification, it'll be, the positive will become negative, okay. So, we have simplified this to become like this, and then at the end, we can see that these two blocks also can be multiplied together because they are in series, okay? And then, after that, we have the last loops that we can simplify, okay? Where this is the G and this is the H, okay? And then, when uh, we just put that into the equation, this is actually minus, should be positive, but whenever we do simpli uh, when we do the simplification, this one will change to negative. Okay? So, this is at the end, basically, is the 
transfer function, which is the ratio between the output Ys to the input Rs. Okay? So this is when you do the block diagram reduction, okay, to simplify a block diagram for a complex block to become a simple block, and then at the end, you can get the transfer function. Okay? So imagine if you do for this work, you do with using a mathematical equation. Okay? How much work you need to do? Okay, to solve this one. Okay? But with this, you can do very fast. Okay, so any question about the block diagram? Okay, so basically with this block diagram, basically we end the chapter 2. Okay, uh, the only thing after this, we are moving to uh, Scilabs, but still we are staying in chapter 2. We are using the chapter 2 for the examples. Okay, uh, for the Scilab, maybe we have a uh, uh, four hours to cover, okay, including today. Okay, uh, if you look at the website, uh, the e-learnings, basically I just added this this morning, so sorry for the late, I think uh, maybe you are unable to print the, the slide for today, okay. Uh, okay, from this website, if you notice, okay, one of the things is that I put is a Scilab website. There is a Scilab website here. Okay, you can open up this Scilab website. Okay, where later on you can download the software. Okay, here the latest version is basically you got the uh, version of uh, version 5.4.1. Uh, 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 okay, that is the latest version that we have. Okay. So this also become a gift for you for attending this course. Okay, this software is free. Okay, you can download it uh, freely and install it in your computer because it is fall under the license of GNU, a free license. Uh, For those who have the difficulty to, to download that, okay, you can download this one also from our e-learning site, uh, from, from my folder site, okay? But this is uh, version 5.4, okay? Uh, 5.4.0, okay? A little bit older, okay? And the other thing is that there is a book here, Introduction to Scilabs. Labs. Okay. The book was written by the one who creating the software. Okay, the person who developing the software. So I think uh, this book is quite uh, uh, useful. And basically, if you want to learn, uh, you can refer, uh, use this. Okay, it is a hands-on tutorial. Uh, you got a hands-on tutorial as well. Okay, so you can follow this to learn about the side labs. Okay, thoroughly. Okay.
Okay, maybe you can click this one if you want to download uh, the, and then you later on after completing the download, you can install it later on. Okay, for this slide is, okay, the book was written by the one who creating the software, okay, the person who developing the software. So I think uh, this book is quite uh, uh, useful and basically if you want to learn, uh, you can refer, uh, use this. Okay, it is a hands-on tutorial. Uh, you got a hands-on tutorial as well. Okay, so you can follow this to learn about the side labs. Okay, thoroughly. Okay. Okay, maybe you can click this one if you want to download uh, the, and then you later on after completing the download, you can install it later on. Okay, for this slide is actually I didn't prepare for one hour. It is more than one hour, so we will stop whenever uh, we. We finish our time, okay, uh, and we continue later on, okay. So this is basically the introduction to Scilab software. Okay, what is Scilab? Uh, Any one of you have heard about MATLAB software? How many of you have used the MATLAB software? Tak ada lagi? Okay. Uh, okay. The Scilab, actually, the software is similar to MATLAB. Okay. The only thing, the MATLAB got a license. If you want to use, you need the license. Of course, in USM, we have no problem because for MATLAB, we have 400 license. Okay, but whenever you go to industry, you, you want to use it, you need to buy the license. But with the side labs, it is free. In fact, later on, if you go to your works, you want to install in your industry, doesn't matter. Okay, you can install and use it. Okay, that's why I'm encouraging you to use this. Okay, side lab is a numerical programming and graphical environment available for free from French government in RIA. In RIA is basically National Institute for Informatic and Automation Research. Okay, this is one of the research center in, in French. Okay, in, in, yeah, in, uh, in French, which they develop uh, the software. Okay. The Scilab a broad open spectrum, open source software package for, num uh, for numerical computation. Okay. And we can consider it to, be, uh, to become a, uh, as a super calculator or calculator engines or for making toolboxes. Okay. The advantage of the Scilabs it will be used for calculation uh, use of calculation library of Scilabs. Basically, like MATLAB, it provides many library which can be utilized for calculation. Okay. It has a it is a Programming language plus interpreter. 
Okay, last semester we learned about Python. Python also is basically a programming language and interpreter. Okay, so similar also like this one. It got a programming language where it get a codes, a specific code that we need to understand to run the software. And then the command, when we said it is interpreter, the command we can run immediately, although our programming is not complete. Okay? Easy distribution of software built around Scilabs. Okay, if you build any software utilizing the Scilabs, basically to distribute to others, to use it also is very difficult, very easy, since the license is free. Okay, and then possibility to modify Scilab kernels. Okay, the Scilab also because it is open source, you can in, instead of you get the installer the binary files that you install in your computer, you can get the the source code of the software. So instead, uh, if later on you you were thinking to upgrade the software by adding your code and so on, okay, so you can uh, work from the uh, code source that is given, okay, that you can download. Okay, and it has a complete control of software. Okay. So this is the history of the Scilab, okay. In 1980s, basically, it, uh, it start with a computer-aided control system design. Okay, basically, it focus more on to the control system. Okay, the software is specifically for control system, created by this. Okay. And in 1990s, the Scilab was developed by Scilab groups, which consists of six researcher and then it was this time that the decision was made to distribute the Scilab as open source software. So in 1990s basically it, it has already start distributing the software as open source. Okay. In 2003 okay, the research institute decided to create a Scilab consortium to ensure its future development, maintenance, support, and promotion. Okay, this basically, they are encouraging others to use the Scilab. Okay, that's why they developed the maintenance and also support system so that when we use, okay, we will, if we have problem, we can get support. Okay, and in fact, normally with the open source software, normally we have a difficulty to get support for training and so on. Okay, but for the Scilabs, okay, currently in, in our country, there are company also can provide training for that, for that. So later on, if you use in your industry that you are working on, and for example, you have difficulty to use it and so on, you can get the training from, from those company. Okay. So in 2005, when the Scilab Consortium launched the development of the Java based Scilab, uh, uh, Java based Scilab 5, okay. So be, uh, they're developing this so that the uh, Scilab can run in multi platform. The only thing is that when it is running, when the system is ported into Java, okay, normally the system getting slow. Okay? The only thing, the good thing is that it can run in any platform. That's why the software you can install in Windows, you can install in, uh, in Linux, or in whatever uh, computer system that you have. Okay? But some researchers, they are still wanted the, uh, the, the old system, which is very fast, uh, which is faster than the one in, 
in the in the Java programming. So uh, what they did that they retain the old one and they change the old one with the name of Psychos Lab. Okay. So sometimes maybe you will be confused, but in uh, currently we have two uh, same software. One is called the SciLab. One is called as Psychos Lab. Okay. Both of these is in the same is are the same software. The only thing is that one of them is is programmed in Java so that it can run in multi platform. The other thing, the other one is 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 uh, remain as the old, old system. Okay, so that if you want, if you need a fast uh, software, basically you need to run. Psychos lab instead of Sci lab, okay. But the way how to program and so on is uh, basically the same. The code is the same, okay. Okay. Sci lab for control design. Okay. Sci lab basically the names refer to science lab, okay. To perform numerical function using the concept of matrix, so the approach is actually si similar to similar to MATLAB. Okay, basically utilizing the matrix to do numerical calculation. Okay, system control system theory is very mathematical. Okay, I think you have realized this when we go through the chapter 2 okay it is a lot of mathematical involves okay scilab is ideally suited for it okay so analysis tool available in scilab for example okay later on maybe we need to uh, plot the step response for example okay we can easily use the the scilab to plot the step response and later on also, for designing, we require uh, root lockers. We can plot root lockers also using a side lab. Okay. And there are many more uh, uh, analysis tools that are available in the side lab that we can use later on. Okay, this is how to download the side labs. Okay, basically, you can just go to the side labs uh, ORG. A website and then you can download from there it is distributed in source code you can download the source code if you want okay if you want to modify the software later on okay if you good enough you can change the source code okay you are welcome to do that okay but if you want to just use normally we just install the binary the binary files okay and the binary file basically it will be there are few binary file which is suitable for certain OS but normally if you are running window and if you set to windows uh, 64 bits basically when you get the installer the binary file for the uh, scilab it will directly know your system. Okay, basically it will give your, your binary file which is suitable for your system. Okay, because like just now when I, I download just now, okay, it detected that our computer is running Windows 64 bit. Okay, so if you are running Windows 60, uh, 32 bit, basically it will give different binary file. Okay. Okay. Uh, this one is the information about how many people are currently using the uh, Scilab. Okay. The number of this one is also the information we I get also is quite uh, some time already, but I think the number is increasing now. Okay. The number of downloader who download this software basically 
around 20,000 per month. Okay, so how many people are using actually? Okay, so that's why it is good also for us to use this one. Okay, of course in Malaysia, I noticed that not many people are keen of using the open source. But in Europe and in Western country, America and so on, okay, most of the university they go for open source software. Okay, because in open source software there is a uh, guarantee that we can get the code if we if the we have limitation of, on the software, we can modify the software. Okay, so that because if we buy the license software, normally there is a restriction. Okay, and then sometimes they sell according to modules, certain module different price and so on. And then if we come to that module limits, we cannot go further. Okay. Okay, this is the consortium of the SciLab. Include the, there are uh, 18 members from higher education, from public organization, from the company. Okay. Okay, uh, this little bit tutorial on the uh, side lab, maybe later on after you install, maybe you can and try these examples, okay, as a start of uh, one of the function of the side lab, we can use a side lab as super calculator, okay, usage of side lab for simple arithmetic, okay, for example, when you open the uh, side labs, normally we will, you will come out with the prompt like this. Okay? The arrow prompt. Okay? So after the prompt, you can type any command, any side lab command. Okay? Later on, after you install, you run the uh, side lab, you will find this prompt. Okay? And then on that prompt, you can put any command of the side lab. Okay? And as a simple example, we can do calculation as calculator. Uh, for example, if you want to do uh, addition operation, 2 plus 3, you just type 2 plus 3 and then return key. Okay? When you push the return key, it will give the answer equal to 5. Okay? And then you can try further. For example, if you want to do the division, you can just put 2 divided by 3 and then return, enter key. And then it will show the answer, okay, which is equal to 0 0.6667, okay. And normally here, if you don't assign to any variables, what happens? Automatically, I think this is similar to MATLAB's. Uh, automatically, it will assign to a variable called ANS. Okay? So, automatically, it will it'll assign to ANS. Okay? In this case, when we do this one, you use this one, these variables, and then when we do this one, it assign again to this variable. Basically, it will overriding this, this variable's value. Okay? And then, for example, if you want to do the power, just use 2 power of 3, like that. And then enter. Okay, and then you get the answer, which is 8. Okay. And let's say if you have a, a complex equation like this. Okay. And in the equation, you got a variable S here and variable S here. Okay. Can you do this in... Silabs. Okay. Let's say the S has the value of 5. So how to do this in Silabs? Okay. You just write first the S equal to 0 0.5. And then after that, write this equation. You have the answer for the S. And then write the equation. Ln, you change with the log, logarithm of S square 
okay, minus 2 multiplied by S, multiplied by cos, in bracket, S to the power of, even the pi, you don't need to write the number. You can write just uh, percent pi. Okay? Actually, the Scilab has already stored the value of the pi okay, in their system. And then divided by 2, bracket for the cos, and then plus 1. Okay? And then we press enter. Since the value of the S is, we have assigned here already, we replace the value of S here and then give the answer. Okay? So, to do the mathematical equation, I think it's quite easy. Okay? When you use this, Scilab. Okay? In fact, you can use this to help doing your mathematical uh, assignment. Okay? At home. Okay? Okay. For specifically for the control, of course there there are more basic uh, uh, tutorial for the uh, for the side lab. Maybe if you read the the books that I proposed just now, okay, there are, are more exercise for the simple, maybe on the matrix and so on. Okay, but here we will more focus to the. Uh, control system because we want to try to use the Scilab for uh, for helping us in doing the calculation for control system. Okay, when we use for control system, the first is for modeling. Okay, and with the Scilabs, okay, we can utilize the Scilab to get a dynamical mathematical model of the system GS as the basis for control controller GCS design. Okay? Because whenever we want to do to, uh, to design a control system, when we design a control system, basically, we need to design this GC, the controller. Okay, when we applying a closed loop like this, okay, and here normally we have the plants that we wanted to control, okay, and the plants that we require to control, okay, normally is a physical system where we need to convert it to mathematical models so that later on we can apply the GC. And then we see the response. How is it? Okay. So, with this MATLAB, basically, you will be able to get the dynamic mathematical model of the GES function here. Okay. You can write the mathematical model inside this I lab. And then after that, to test the controller by simulation. Okay. After we having the model of the plants, okay, and then we can design our controller, okay. After, when we designing the controller, okay, before we implement to the real system, normally it is good for us to do simulation, so that we can see the response of the system, okay. After we we designing our controller. Okay, so for that reason, we can utilize this Scilab to test the controller by simulation. Okay, and then next, uh, the model is basically the input-output relationship of the system. Uh, as we learned before, that the model of the system basically is just an input output relationship okay and then you can have the transfer function mathematically uh, you can get the uh, transfer function and it also supporting block diagram as well okay if you want 
okay. So that we can basically view them visually instead of mathematically. Okay. Okay, let's look at some example of as a, a simple example that maybe we can start implementing the uh, Scilab for control system. Okay. I think in last in chapter two we have learned about the mass spring damper system. Okay. Uh, can we utilize this Scilab to model the mass spring and damper system? Let's say we have a system like this, which consists of the component of the block of the mass, okay, uh, basically the weight in kg, and then we have the spring constant, maybe the unit is in, in newton meter, and the damper, this is, this is the damper, B, okay, maybe the unit is in newton second meter per meter, and then the input force is basically the U here, okay. U as function of t, of course, it will give the response y as function of t. Okay, maybe the unit in meters. Okay, the displacement y. Okay, of course, like we learned in chapter two, we need to use the Newton second law. Okay to get the uh, derivative equation okay representing this physical system okay okay so because uh, with the newton second law the summation of the force okay basically equal to ma right okay and basically, the summation of the force basically is equal to the force being applied, ut, minus the force because of the spring, and then minus the, the force because of the damper. And then that equal to ma. Okay? And the a is basically the acceleration is equal to d square y t over dt square. Okay? And then... For the damper, force because of the damper is equal to B multiplied by V, velocity, where the velocity is equal to dy over dt. And then for the spring, okay, it is equal to K multiplied by the displacement, yt. Okay? So we have this differential equation for the mass spring and damper system. Okay? And in chapter 2 also, we learn to get the transfer function. Basically, we need to, to transform this equation using Laplace transforms into S domain or the frequency domain. Okay? The only thing to make it simpler, we let all the initial condition zero. Okay? Because when we let the initial condition zero, we can straightforward transform this to S domain. Okay? Where d square y over dt square will become S square. Yt will become capital YS. Okay? And then dy over dt. Okay? Uh, d over dt will become S. And then y t will become y capital y s, okay, and then y t here also will become capital y s. U t will become capital u s, okay. Okay, don't forget this one. We don't have the uh, initial condition because we let the initial condition zero. That's why we can directly transform this equation to become like this. Okay? And then if we rearrange the equation, okay, we can and put all the, what, the equation with the ys to one side, 
and with the, the one without the Ys to the other side, and then factor them. And then after that, we can rearrange the equation, become the ratio of the output divided by the input, where we rearrange this equation, it will become 1 divided by m s square plus b s plus k. Okay, so this is the transfer function of the mass spring and damper system. Okay? I think we have done this before. I think, I think you can follow, right? Okay, this mathematical model in frequency domain is known as transfer function. Okay? Then once we get that transfer function, okay, that transfer function is in the form of mathematical equation. And can we uh, model it in the transfer function in Psi lab. Okay, to do that, okay, first we need to define S to be a polynomial uh, variables. Okay, so what you need to do in the Psi lab commands, you need to type S equal to percent S. Okay, and then return. Okay, if you put the semicolon here, it don't echo the results. It don't show the results. Okay? You can just enter, or if you don't want the result to be shown, you can put a semicolon. Okay? That is option. Okay? So we put this one. Okay? This one is necessary if we want to work with the polynomial equation. Okay? Because with that, basically later on, we need to, we don't need to assign the S with, with a specific value like before. Okay? So, then, next, okay? Uh, to write down the equation of that transfer function, okay? The transfer function before we have the equation of 1 divided by m multiplied by s square plus b multiplied by s plus k, right? I think if you not sure, we can refer back to the equation here. So this is the equation that we want to model in the side lab. Okay. Let's say uh, we assign a value of the M, the mass, let's say is one kilogram, the K, the spring constant equal to three Newton meter, and then uh, Newton per meter, and then uh, B, two Newton second per meter. Okay. So first we can write the numerator, maybe let's set the numerator uh, with the variable num, num, equal to 1, because the numerator is 1, right? Because 1 over m multiplied by s square multiply, uh, plus by bs plus uh, k, okay? And then for denumerator, maybe we just assign a variables. This variable name, you can put any names you want, uh, okay? So in this case, maybe because this implying the denumerator, maybe we just put as a den. Okay, denumerator equal to, this is for the equation m multiplied by s square plus b multiplied by s plus k. The only thing we replace the m equal to 1, and we replace the b equal to 2, and then the k equal to 3. So we write the equation for the denumerator like this. S power of 2 plus 2 multiplied by S plus 3. Okay? And then, to get the transfer function, okay, you, know, you need to use the command name syslin, system linear, actually. Okay? 
command to define a continuous uh, rational. Okay, so how to write that one? Let's say we assign this the transfer function to variable system. Okay, we create it to syslin. This is the name of the function, syslin. And then in the bracket, there are three parameter. Okay, one of the parameter, we just type code C. Okay, C with the colon here. Okay, if you want to know more what is the function of C, you can and type help and since uh, syslin, so you can get uh, the definition of this is uh, code C. Okay, but what? Uh, but normally we need to type this one, so just follow this one. Type code C, and then this is the numerator, the equation for the numerator, and this is the equation for the numerator. Okay, so we just write that. Okay, and then after that, if we don't type the semicolon, it will show the results of the uh, about the syslin about the transfer function okay so you can try this uh, this uh, this code okay whenever you go back to your home okay today try install it and try it okay since sekarang dah pukul 11 okay kita berhenti di sini dan kita akan sambung nanti Okay, ingatkan saya kita berhenti di sini. Ada soalan tak on the side lab ni? Okay, kita sambung lagi hari Kamis nanti.